not Game of Thrones. <sighs> that worked. Hi, I'm Bear Claw Billy, and welcome to my brand new show, Dinner for a Movie. How does it work? You send me dinner, I'll watch any movie. Go to this email address and we'll talk, because I'm not giving out my mailing address to just anybody. Today's amazing, amazing meal comes from Kelly Nova, who does all kinds of cool, spooky art, and you should definitely check it out in the links under the video. It's really cool. There's like bugs and little tiny coffins, and she made a Fiji mermaid. Definitely check out her work. It's amazing. But I gotta say, my favorite work of hers is this incredible meal. Look at all this. Feast your eyes upon this. Kelly sent me, not butternut squash, I had that already. Kelly sent me the stuff to make a green bean casserole. She sent me rolls. She sent me mashed potatoes. She sent me stuffing and of course, delicious, delicious turkey. I haven't put the gravy on yet because it's TV and I don't want it to get soggy early. But she also sent me gravy. Kelly also sent me fancy chocolate and a face mask, which I will definitely be wearing during this movie, which is, in the title of this video, so you've probably figured it out already, but I'm building up to it. It is a movie where Christopher Walken improvises a monologue about putting pie on his head. And wouldn't you know it, Kelly also sent me three kinds of pie. And the only line I know from this movie is, it's turkey time. Gobble gobble. Friends, I'm about to watch Gili. <laughs> Well, that movie sure was something. Let me give you my spoiler-free take. If you like bad movies, this was a great one. The dialogue was ridiculous in a lot of spots. I will throw in this caveat. There's a lot of uncomfortable stuff that doesn't make this quite a we're just throwing on a bad movie viewing. There's some dark stuff, um, and some of it is not necessarily intentionally dark. I think it's just made in 2003. So just heads up going in. It's not quite the, the we're gonna just have a 100% laugh riot movie that you might be expecting. I will say this though, uh, surprisingly watchable outside of those things. When it's bad, it's wonderfully bad. And believe it or not, when it's good, it's actually kind of good, but I'm not gonna say it's a good movie. We'll get into it. Here comes the spoiler parts review. watched American Psycho, but I can't remember the speech he gives. Complete overhaul, change of blood, added a good 20 or 30 years of my life! Ooh, looking, looking, well, looking kind of red. To be honest, that was quite invigorating. Thank you, Kelly. It says to massage the excess product into the face. What was that American Psycho speech? Cucumber water grown on the slopes of Mount Nicaragua. Nope, that's the Truman Show. Spoiler time review! Oh my goodness! So I went into this thinking, Gili is the best movie to watch on Thanksgiving. Number one, it's turkey time. Number two, Christopher Walken has the pie monologue. Number three, it's directed by Martin Brest. Like turkey breast. And number four, it opens with a speech about how much meat is in a human. So happy Thanksgiving from all of us here at Gili. All right, to so my notes, which I forgot that I can have this time because uh, it's not Hell of Thrones. So one of the first things, this is when playing a neurodivergent character got you an Oscar instead of canceled. This was right on the tail end of when we were starting to realize, hey, maybe cut that shit out. That's a problem with this movie. I'm just gonna say full stop. So Gili is about Larry Gili, Ben Affleck, who has to kidnap the mentally disabled younger brother of somebody, played by Justin Bartha. And in the process, they send Ricky, played by Jennifer Lopez, to watch after him. And the two of them fall in love, which is a big snag because she is a lesbian. That's the movie in a nutshell, but wow, do they fit a lot of bonker shit in around all that. Early on, the like just verbal abuse of the mentally disabled character is Yikes. And it is setting up a, you know, story where he learns to be nicer to him. But still, it's it's hard to watch. It's jarring. I think if you're settling in for, oh boy, a bad movie, those parts get into like, oh, harmful movie rather than bad movie. They're at the beginning. They're fairly quick. I kind of had to push through them. But like, as the story goes on, it's not so bad. However, it still has that whole, he's heartwarming and inspiring in that, you know, awful way that movies used to treat uh, mentally disabled characters so 
not great. That's a down in terms of throwing this on for bad movie night. I'd say almost everything else though, woo wee! Throughout the movie, there's all these conversations about like, real sex is between a man and a woman. I can't believe you're a lesbian, which again, problematic, but like, enjoyable that it's written in such a stupid way. Gili goes on about like, I'm the bull, you're the cow, and like, holy fucking shit. But then it gets subverted in a way that I actually like. We'll get to that. In the middle of all this, Christopher Walken shows up and I fucking cheered. If you haven't seen the clip of him just doing a minute long monologue about pie, go down to Marie Callens, get a big bowl of pie. Like, it's great, look it up. I won't show the whole clip here just so I don't get copyright slapped. But like, in watching it, he's doing this weird voice. And I remember thinking going into this movie, I can't wait to see if that scene makes sense in context. Nope! It could be argued that he's trying to be loud to see if anyone else is in the house. But here's the thing, and I do not want to question the great Christopher Walken. If I were going to play that scene, I'd be like, I'm thinking of getting some pie. Like, saying it loud so that someone else in the house would hear it. But he does it like this. I want to get some pie, you interested? Shit! Like, I don't know what the voice is that he's doing. He's like, I can really go for some pie! Like, I don't know what this cartoon character voice is he's doing. I'd actually forgotten that it was a plot point that Jennifer Lopez's character was a lesbian going into this. And I just remember, this is not the first movie where Ben Affleck tries to turn a lesbian. Um, what's up with that, Ben? Why is that your thing? There's an amazingly cheesy scene where Ricky threatens a guy who's playing music. And by the way, they never show what he's playing music on until the very end of the scene. Editing is important, kids. You need to establish what's happening and where things are in a scene. I couldn't tell if it was like, part of the soundtrack or if it was playing at the diner. But anyway, some darn kids turned their darn music up too darn loud. And Ricky goes to threaten them with the rip that takes the past. A fighting move that apparently pulls out part of your brain and makes you forget everything. What a badass threat. Like, it was so cheesy and hilarious, and I loved it. Like, it really felt like it belonged in a different movie, but like, I loved it. And then at the end, Larry smashes the kid's laptop. We finally see where the music was coming from and says, I quote, suckmydick.com. Why is turkey time and the pie speech the quote everybody knows from this? I'm here to put suckmydick.com in the lexicon of Gili discussions. That's the one we should have focused on. Ricky talks to Gili about like repressing emotion and how that's probably not good for him. And it was like this weirdly tender moment right after the scene where she threatens to rip someone's memories out through their eyeball. <laughs> and then they go to meet Gili's mom, and Gili's mom half is encouraging Ricky to sleep with Gili, and half is trying to sleep with Ricky herself? It's really weird, but I will say the scenes that come after kind of give it some context that, like, maybe Gili's mom always knew there was something different about him? We're gonna get to that. So there's a whole bunch of speeches in this movie about how men and women just evolve to be together. And ooh, Ricky, I know you're a lesbian, but you gotta be with a guy. You gotta be with a big macho guy. Larry gives some really awful speech about how like, you know, lesbians crave men because they go and buy a bunch of doohickeys that are shaped like men. I believe at one point he uses the phrase erotic monkey wrenches. And the whole thing is just cringy and gross and I didn't really like it. And so I was like, this is all gonna lead up to a scene where Larry's gonna be like, you just ain't been getting dicked right. Lady, the reason you're a lesbian is because you just ain't been dicked right, which is just such a gross thing. Surprise. The movie actually went another way and it warmed my heart. This might be my new Rocky Horror Picture Show in that it's bad, but at the heart of it is some really wonderful and bright and true queer subtext. They start getting closer and Larry's like, what's going on here? I thought you wanted a woman. And Ricky says, I got one. I didn't expect to tear up at this movie. Yeah, there's trans subtext in this movie. I would go so far as to say not subtext, actual text. So now the scene with Geely's mom being like, I always knew there was something about him. Give him a try. I'm like, wait, wait, was that? Was that Geely's mom being like, I always got a feeling that there was some femme there. And then they have really sweet, lovey sex. And then Gili says, yeah, that whole cow bull thing, sorry. I'm the cow? Which, okay. 
good enough attempt for 2003. And like, it's not just a one-time thing. Like, it feels very much like a, a part they put in just to justify that she slept with a man. But like, at the end of the movie, she's like, hey, you'd look good with mascara. And he doesn't outright reject that idea? And it all was just really sweet to me. And like, if I can be a little personal here, that's been my experience with figuring out that I'm trans, is partners being like, I'm really picking up on your femininity here. Um, are you? And me being like, what? <laughs> no, maybe. I never expected this from the cinematic turkey Gili. Um, but I'm eating it up. Gobble, gobble. Um, Pacino shows up at one point to try to top walking. He fails. The movie tries to make a lot of humor out of Brian, the mentally disabled character, rapping. It's cringy. It's real cringy. Doesn't really work. It plays half funny, half heartwarming, and neither one's really good. Just, mm -mm, nope. The movie tonally is very all over the place. I feel like there are elements of this that could work, but it just didn't come together as a whole. There's a weird subplot about Baywatch. Like, Brian really wants to be on Baywatch. And towards the end of the movie, they, they drive past a music video shoot and he thinks it's Baywatch. And so, first of all, they just let him go. Like, it's not a closed off set. He can just get in there and be in the video. Okay. But also I realized, when did Baywatch end? So I looked it up. 2001. Did you know that? Baywatch was on the air until 2001. At that point, it was called Baywatch Hawaii. My favorite was Baywatch Enterprise. There are 242 episodes of Baywatch. I'll watch all of them for $10,000. Get at me. Speaking of the early 2000s, this came out the same year as Daredevil. Daredevil dropped in February of 2003, and this dropped in the summer of 2003. Watching this, I realized Jennifer Lopez should have played Elektra. I love Jennifer Garner, but Jennifer Lopez should have played Elektra through and through. The second to last scene is very cringy. It's trying to be heartwarming, but it just kind of feels really misguided, and you just kind of like, feel bad and you feel yourself tense up and you want to look around the room at the people watching with you which for me is nobody thanks pandemic the movie ends on a quote that's come up throughout it which is not everything is black and white if that's not an indictment of the gender binary like at the end a tough gangster is told that he would look good in mascara i kind of love parts of you Gili, so i'm gonna end the same way you do i don't love you i don't hate you not everything is black and white Thank you so, 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 so much to Kelly Nova for my Gili Thanksgiving mealy. Be sure to check out her work below. Here is my website. Here is my Patreon. Here is the email where you can get on dinner for a movie. Thank you so much for watching. Life is not black and white. Gobble, gobble. Bye, everybody!